You know, when you go to the doctor and you have five minutes, if, and he's, you know, distracted and writing things a lot and your questions aren't getting answered. And, you know, it's the way it is. And I have a, I have a doctor friend in Canada and uh, their medical system up there. He has to see 70 at seven zero patients a day. And I said, how do you do that? He said, you say things to them like what you have is going around. <laughs> so the reason I'm saying that is because today you get to ask all the questions. I'm here with Dr. Mike. Remember the other day we had internet problems and Dr. Mike, we had to send him away and he's been <laughs> crying ever since. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, here is Dr. Mike. He, Hi um, everyone. He's got like, I was going to use the word Rolodex, but that's such an old word. Right? He's got like a Rolodex in his head of all this information. He um, uh, knows a lot and oh, he's one of my go-to doctors. He's one of you. the um, people in my life that I wonder what Dr. Mike would say. And we thought today we would talk about the gut. My gut, your gut, Dr. Mike's gut. All of her guts. <laughs> Everybody has something wrong with their stomach. You know, gut intelligence uh, tells you that something you're doing, if you're bloated all the time, something's wrong. How come, Dr. Mike, I'll start you off. Okay. Um, bloating. When I do a lecture and I say to the women in the audience, how many in the w women in the room right now are bloated? Pretty much every hand goes up. <laughs> you're right. And it's like, that isn't Pretty right. Common. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Why aren't our guts wor working right? Uh, so that's, I mean... There's a, there's a big, that's a big question. I right? know. Uh, and there, and there, there's a lot of things to kind of talk <laughs> about there. Um, but I will tell you that uh, in, in my experience in, in practicing med medicine many, many years ago, um, any gut complaint like gassy, bloating, it was so common. So many people every day, um, more women than men, because I think men don't admit it. Right. But, you know, because there's, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. That kind of whatever. Right? right. So I saw mostly women with that kind of a complaint. And I always kind of called it uh, a part of the mystery symptoms. I don't, I don't know if we've ever talked about that before, but there's, there's these symptoms, these kind of vague symptoms, uh, gas, bloaty, achy. My, it just, my gut just doesn't feel right. I feel swole. I mean, all that kind of stuff. Right. And they go through workup. After workup, after workup, blood testing, all these things are ruled out and they still don't have an answer. They're still feeling that way. And 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 usually at that point, most conventional doctors put them on antidepressants. Ah, go figure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so it's a it's a and I, I call it the problem. Mystery. Yeah. And I call it the mystery symptoms because it's they're tough. As I, I can tell you as a clinician, you know, you do your best to 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 try to diagnose something and and sometimes it's just not there. But I think the problem I ran into when I was practicing medicine, I was more conventional back then, right? Right. I didn't have the knowledge I have today about things like toxins and leaky gut or something that, that is, is coming into the, into the light a little bit more now with research called SIBO, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, food sensitivity issues. I, 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 I almost feel ashamed that many years ago, when I had these kind of mystery symptoms in front of me in a patient, and I never once thought about food sensitivity issues. I mean, that's horrible, right? Um, but now that, I understand, well, now that I understand these things, um, it, it's opened um, my diagnostic tool bag up a little bit more. And I have been able to help a lot of people when we think about some of these non-conventional reasons uh, for having these mystery symptoms of the gut. And I'm sure we'll get into a, a, a lot of those, but bloating was the big one. First thing, anybody who's having bloating, bloating issues and is watching right now, first thing you should try just to make sure uh, and to rule it out is digestive enzymes. Yes. I mean, that's yeah. just start there. It's simple. You know, those enzymes, we, we, you know, we're talking about enzymes that break down protein from your food, break down fat, break down, um, you know, carbohydrates. And we, we don't make them as much as we should, as we get a little older. And so that food kind of sits there. It goes from the small gut into the colon. It starts to ferment and that's when you feel bloated. So just start there. That's going to help. It may not answer it completely. And that's when, where we can talk, Suzanne, about like food sensitivities and SIBO and leaky gut and stuff. And I think, as you say, you know, you didn't address food sensitivities back then, back in the day when you were more conventional. Um, we are, the chemical onslaught 
hadn't quite taken the hold that it has today. I think, I think we've hit the wall now with all our children who have gut issues, children with gut issues. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and uh, tell me if you think I'm right, that it goes back to our first womb, I call it the first room that we all live in, our mother's <laughs> womb, which used to be pristine. But is there a pristine womb left? Yeah, and so now yeah. babies are being grown in an environment that is uh, imbalanced. Yes. And um, Sc scary you, thing, you, you probably know this, right? That they've they, they now have um, cord blood, you know, you know umbilical yes. cord blood. Right. Right, and they can they actually can measure they can quantify toxins in that already. Well, that, was the, that was the environmental working group, right? Didn't yeah, they? yeah. They they found bisphosphonates. They they found. I mean, I mean, we're talking in some cases like benzene, like cancer forming toxins in the the fetal circulation. What Mike, is, out. <laughs> what Mike was talking about, there was a report done by the environmental working group where they tested the cord blood across the economic spectrum from the poorest to the richest. Uh, not one of these babies had yet had a sip of breast milk. They tested them each for 287 different toxins yeah. and every single baby oh. tested positive for a minimum of 180 yeah. different toxins. That never happened before. So now, now we grow this baby into a small child and a teenager and adult, and it's all making sense, isn't it? I, I think so. And, and, you know, for many years, there were some, some pretty pioneering integrative medical doctors and naturopathic doctors that were talking about this thing called leaky gut syndrome. Um, it became kind of popular I, maybe 15 years ago. Um, but there was a lot of research going on before that. Um, when this idea of leaky gut first came out, it, it was kind of, you know, poo-pooed by obviously the conventional gastroenterologist and, and other conventional doctors. But I think more and more we're starting to realize that there is this link now, especially in adulthood with exposure to toxins, breakdown of your gut lining and those toxins actually entering your bloodstream directly. And that's yep. what's really scary. It's almost like just a, you know, a, a flood of toxins that come from the food, the environment that get right that goes right into your bloodstream and, and cause this problem. Here's here's where it gets really even it, it's scarier to me. We have been able to trace some of those toxins from the bloodstream into what's called the lymphatic system. That's wow. the immune system. Right. And we're starting to make a link now between the toxins in the in, in the lymphatic system that came from the gut, right? Right. That are linked to autoimmune disorders, certain cancers. And then those toxins now, we've also been able to follow them. They circulate back to the bloodstream. So you get this, you get this cycle of flow of toxin from the bloodstream to the lymphatics, back to the blood, bloodstream. It's well documented and it actually has a name now. It's called auto intoxication. And most wow. adult Americans are suffering from auto uh, intoxication. So we have environmental we, issues. We have drunk immune systems. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my understanding of the immune system is, uh, you know, the GI tract, if you laid it out flat, be the length of a tennis court. And around that courting, let's say, is mucus. And that's the immune system. It's got antibacterial and antiviral and interferon even. This is, but think about it. If that's what the chemicals that are going to eat through that lining, your immune system to create the leaks. Yeah. From your leaky gut, now you've degraded your immune system, and you got no protection. And there uh, you go. Yeah, and we're seeing that connection, right? With just for autoimmune disorders have now been linked to that lymphatic um, toxicity. You know, and it's it's like it's like the immune system becomes too sensitive now because of all these toxins. It's it's, it's overexposed, if you will, and that has now been linked to some of those um, disorders like lupus, for instance. And yeah. so, yeah, I think um, I'm glad you, know, we, we, you and I end up talking about the gut a lot. We end up talking about toxins a lot. And yeah. it's interesting that we're now really having the conversation where we're bringing them together. Because um, in my opinion, there's no doubt whether it's through food, water, air, what we're exposed to today, we've never seen before in human history. 
No. And it starts in the womb, like you said, right? This isn't yeah. something just as an adult you get exposed to. I mean, kids are being born from the from conception. They're being exposed. They're being born, and for the rest of their life. From conception. I mean, yeah. think about what you just said from conception. Yeah. So some change has to be made in the world of gynecology where now doctors rarely have the uh, advantage of planning a pregnancy. But if you're going to plan a pregnancy as a doctor, it seemed to me, you got to get that womb all uh, cleaned out before you even, before you even start, start thinking about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some, something doctors have never had to think about before. That was the the one safe, really safe place. We all had our first room inside our mother's, you know, uh, body. It's um, it's it's just I never, I never, any other room. <laughs> our, yeah, our first room is dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here mothers go to great, you know, young mothers go to great pains to not drink alcohol and not smoke and to eat right and everything, but they can't fight. That's where it's what? tough, right? Yeah. The, their own imbalanced microbiome. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's where it gets tough. And I think you just said something that's important is, you know, the, you know, young moms are, are trying to do whatever they can to keep that first room clean. Um, but, but what's really frustrating to me is because of our, uh, the amount of chemicals that we allow in our environment today. Um, I, I know the number changes here and there, but it was 70 something thousand, 75,000, Certified even. industrial chemicals are used in a variety of products in the United States. And even the breast milk I've read in the environmental working group, the, the breast milk is now contaminated. Think about that. Of course. And yeah. I mean, it, it's, absolutely. Yeah. And and because all of those, all of those components, whether it's the womb itself, breast milk, the gut, they are all connected. And, right. and so if the gut is seeping this stuff in, it gets into the lymphatic. Once it's in the lymphatic system and go anywhere. And yes, it's going to get into the breast tissue. It's going to get into the milk production. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's that makes perfect sense to me. One of the things I notice when my gut gets off, and I've had bouts with leaky gut, is dog tired. Makes me dog tired. Yeah. And I'm looking at Roseanne, who just asked a question here about. She said, "I have a lot of problems with my gut and bloating and gases, and suffer with depression." She wants uh, to know what to take. Yeah, but depression is a part of it too. When you have no energy. And your body doesn't feel good when your body's bloated. You just you're like you're dragging it around, even if you're yeah. thin. Yeah. Well, the fatigue is is part of the mystery symptoms that, that I that I talked about. That's another. Yeah. It's another common complaint. Um, again, mostly women, but because I I think men just don't admit it. But um, right. It's right. that it's a common it's a common complaint that rarely gets a diagnosis. And 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 again, usually the antidepressants come out right that prescription. And, right. and, and But now that we understand more about toxins and leaky gut and food sensitivities and, and SIBO and all those things, uh, which I know what we'll touch on today, I, I think that opens up um, how, how we're going to be able to take better care of people and how we can actually target some of these things to see if, see if we can make people feel better. And from my perspective, it would be a shame to start on and then get hooked on antidepressants. Because that's that's a band aid, but it's it's never going to cure, and that's a foreign molecule you're putting into your body. You're already uh, sick because of all the foreign molecules in your gut, and now you're taking another one, and it makes you feel good. It's probably hard to get off of. I've never yeah. taken one. Well, so it's bad. it's it's not. You know, what's interesting in medicine, Suzanne. One of the things that, as a physician, I took an oath to do is to always look at what's called the benefit risk analysis. Of if I'm going to do anything to you whether it be a functional medicine thing, a supplement or a drug, I always, my job is supposed to weigh the, the risk versus the benefit. And with, when it comes to antidepressants, any class, but especially the common SSRIs, that's your Prozac, right? They, they're not very effective. For mild to moderate depression, um, that's where you get a, a majority of the prescriptions right there. The, uh, the efficacy of those antidepressants is 20, 30% at best, yet the risk, the side effects are extremely high. Absolutely. And if, if doctors are, are really serious about not doing harm, they would not be prescribing these drugs as much as they do and reserve them for the severe cases. Now, if you're severely depressed, some of those drugs do have a role, at least for a while. But a godsend. Yeah, a godsend. It, yeah. But in most cases, mild to moderate depression, 
They don't work. And you end up with a bunch of side effects that you're trying to fight now. And also, I think with the limited amount of time that doctors have per patient, it becomes easier to just pull out the prescription pad. Yeah. So, well, yeah. so it, it, people, like, that, people like you to do something as a doctor too. Yes, exactly. They like you to write something. They like you to listen to the heart or whatever. They like you to do something. So they do. They play a little show. Yeah. I remember I interviewed Dr. Brzezinski in one of my books. and um, Brilliant doctor. Brilliant. He was talking about palliative care at what point. I said, explain palliative care. And he said, well, it makes the patient feel like something's being done. It makes the family feel like something's being done because it's psychological. Yeah. You know, there's nothing more we can do, but we can give you this to make you feel more comfortable. And I think antidepressants can fall into that same that that same category. But what you and I are talking about is fixing the gut, fixing yeah. it. Like like Rosanna just asked about her bloating and gas and depression. Are we are we going to go first? Yeah. Do you take a probiotic? Do you yeah. Take well, let's talk. Let's th so that that question was interesting, right? Because it also brings up a, a whole nother topic, actually, right. which is the the gut brain connection, right? right. And we've talked about that before. Right. Um, the, the, you know, the the brain and the gut, um, when you are developing as a fetus, come from the same clump of cells, and and then at some point they migrate, obviously, to kind of opposite poles. So you have your gut here and you have your brain here. But a lot of those Hopefully. hormonal, neural, hormonal connections are still there. Yeah. And so you see, you know, the brain can make serotonin, but guess what? So can the gut. Right. The brain can make adrenaline. So can the gut. So there's this similar, um, almost like chemistry between the gut and the brain. And that's kind of that gut brain connection. But the, the real connection comes in when, when, when you look at the microbiome, you, when you look at the, the makeup of the different types, the variety of healthy gut bacteria and how they can influence the health of that neuro hormonal connection between the gut and the brain. Um, a lot of people do believe now that the gut issue comes first and the depression follows. I think so. Yeah. And I think there's enough research to really start believing that. And so if you are treating, if, if you're someone who is on an antidepress antidepressant and you haven't thought about your gut, I would, I would at the same time be working on my gut and you might Absolutely. actually get better efficacy from the antidepressant. Absolutely. And, um, People get confused with uh, probiotics, prebiotics. They they um, they don't understand. All, there are a lot of different strains. Yeah. Explain the different strains if you can. There are a lot, and that's a big question. Well, so uh, th there's two broad um, types of healthy bacteria that we see in our gut. It, 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 it really, if you just think of it that way, it's really not as bad as it seems. There's there's basically the the lactobacilli. That's your lactic acid producing strains, right? Uh, right. Acidophilus, a very common one, right? right. Um, that's one broad category. And there's, there's three, four, five different ones in there like acidophilus. Okay. The other big category is the um, what some people say bifidobacteria or bifidobacterium, um, like B. longum, for instance. That, that's an, an, another group that you see. Most of the probiotics, if you're doing it just for general gut care are going to be a combination of strains from those two groups. And that's what you want to see. You want to, when you're taking a probiotic product for general gut health, you want to make sure you're seeing those two broad categories. There might be another one here and there sprinkled in that's a little different, but for the most part, those two categories, three or four different strains in, or species in each one, that's a good general probiotic. The reason I can say that, and I do believe that, is if you look at fermented foods um, that, that you might eat, wh wh whatever that might be, the tofu, for instance, if you, if, you, if you actually, yeah, sauerkraut, which I love, by the way, I don't know, no one likes that anymore. Me I don't too. Know. Yeah. Next time you come over, I'm going to give you sauerkraut and a Polish sausage. I love it. It's yeah. one of my favorite things. I, my dad was a big sauerkraut. But anyways, okay. Um, if you if you analyze in those fermented foods, the, the different types of bacteria, guess what you see? A lot of the lactobacilli and a lot of the bifidobacterium. And so yeah. to me, why not mimic what nature does in providing probiotics? And so I think a good general probiotic has at least those two broad categories.
And what you're just talking about with uh, fermented vegetables like sauerkraut, that's a prebiotic, right? Well, it no, it, it's both. That's that's the beauty of when we eat right, <laughs> right? Like nature knows how to do this. Imagine right. that, right? <laughs> right. Um, so sauerkraut, using that as an example, there are back in that, that fermentation process, there are bacteria there. Again, the bifido and the, or the bifido and the um, lactobacillus. But you also have certain um, fibers uh, that come with that sauerkraut. So when you eat it, you're not only getting the probiotics, you actually are also giving them the food. That so they the prebiotic eat. is food for the probiotic. Yes. So prebiotic makes the probiotic work better. Yes. And that's exactly what, when, so when you're eating fermented food and please fermented food is a part of a healthy diet. We need to right. eat more fermented food. Um, right. When you do that, you're getting both in, in one, you know, whatever, one serving of sauerkraut, you're getting both the prebiotic and the probiotic. And so, so let's copy what nature does. I, 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 everybody at least should be on a general probiotic. I think we all agree with that, right? Absolutely. There are prebiotics out there that you can add. Some of them come mixed in with the probiotics. Some of them, if you want, you can take separate. Um, I do think it's important to add a prebiotic and let me explain why. So because of the environment that we live in, and in, in some cases, the lifestyles that we live, the stress, the bad eating, you had the toxins in, good research now, Suzanne, has shown that that type of environment favors the harmful bacteria. The E. coli's that are in your gut, even though maybe they're not causing disease, we all have those disease causing bacteria floating around there a little bit. And it's the bad environment that really is beneficial for them. The bad environment supports the bad guys. And if you take just a probiotic by itself and nothing else, that's better than nothing. But what you're really doing is you're just replenishing those dead good guys every day. You're not actually probably reestablishing a better, healthier, balanced gut because the bad guys every day are eating up all the food in that environment and the probiotics they get in, that's bet that's good for 12, 14 hours. And then guess what? They, st they start to die off. It's the prebiotic. When you mix the prebiotic with the probiotic, you're, you're, you're changing the advantage. The prebiotic is going to favor the good guy. So they actually can eat and thrive and truly begin to rebalance your microbiome. So I'm a big believer in both. I, th I think you just cleared up uh, so much information for the people out there who don't understand, like, why do I take a prebiotic? It's like with the prebiotic, you win the war in there because you need the bad guys, but you need the good guys. You need the right ratio. And right. that's what you're talking about. And that was really it. a great explanation. Thank you. Prebiotic. And, and of course, that's the way nature does it, right? So let's copy yeah. what food is, right? If we're gonna, you know, yeah. why, make this, why make this complicated? <laughs> right. Have you ever been to South Korea? No, but gosh, I want to go so bad. You know, I uh, did a health conference over there and the first uh, restaurant I went to, I said, do you have anything organic? And they looked at me strangely <laughs> and said, we only have organic. Like, like, said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, in this restaurant, he said, in our whole country, yeah. we do not spray pesticides on yeah. our food. So think of, it'd be interesting if someone ever did a study of South Koreans. They eat kimchi, which is fermented cabbage and, and things, Love with it. every meal, like that's all their food is organic. I yeah. bet their health and their gut health over there is so much better than ours here with all our genetically modified food and our pesticides sprayed on our food and, and the overuse of antibiotics, you know, if you've had antibiotics, you've you've pretty much screwed up the microbiome balance that yeah. Dr. I, Mike was just talking about. I've never seen data showing um, whether or not Eastern countries, far Eastern countries have less of those mystery symptoms, but we do know that they do have less colon cancers. You know, they have less metabolic disease, right? Uh, amazingly- That's talking, to, that's talking they, to me. They have less dementia cases. So, I mean, if that means the gut brain thing is working better than ours here. Yeah. It's I mean, I, I think Alzheimer's here is a, uh, I agree with you, Karen. That was a great explanation, Dr. Mike. Alan, 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 Jumping Jack's behind you. I don't know what he was just doing. 
He was? He left. <laughs> <laughs> Al likes to make an appearance in every show. Yeah, yeah. Real <laughs> quick, he just ran through doing something. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say to Rhonda, yes, you take pre and pro together. Yes, you um, I, What you just said, though, to me about the health in those countries um, is really inspiring because we are we actually have an epidemic in this country right now of Alzheimer's baby boomers. We have a 50 percent increased risk of Alzheimer's. And if we have diabetes, we increase that by another 50 percent. So uh, taking care of the gut, because as Dr. Mike just explained, the, the gut brain, taking care of the, the gut to keep your brain healthy uh, would be a goal that would be very worthwhile for everyone. I don't like to use the word should. But I what I try to do. Back to that original question about the gut and the depression. I, I guess the answer for her is make sure you're doing a pre and probiotic. And let's just begin there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. And also keep in mind too, you know, I would increase your four minute food intake and, you know, get on. And it's, I, I'm going to say, cause I, you got to get on a high quality probiotic. You, there's a lot of choices out there in the industry, right. Suzanne, and you got to make sure you're sticking with a, a company, a brand that you, you trust. And so um, a, a company that tests and makes sure it's the, 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 that those bacteria are alive right. in that product and they have, they, they are transparent. They have documentation of that. So pick a good brand, get started and let's see if that helps. So, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. Um, but there are things like H. pylori, uh, E. coli, which you just mentioned, and then the mother of all C. difficile. Yeah, that's a big, that one. big, big one. Do you want to just do a little bit on each one of those? Yeah. So that, that let's talk about the C. diff, the C. difficile that you just mentioned. Interesting. That used to be not even that long ago, 20 years ago, when I was when I was a medical student, that was a rare infection. Yeah. It, it was something that when I was I, when I was a medical student, if, if somebody in the surgical unit got C. diff, we all went up to examine that patient because it was rare. Mm -hmm. Think about that. And you know what? You know how often it happens today in hospitals? 20 to 25 percent at major county hospitals, patients will get or have been exposed to C. diff. Wow. Yeah. So this and, is and, and to, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, C. diff gone wild. You can die, right? Oh, no, it's life threatening. It has to be treated with harsh, harsh anti antibiotics. Here's my theory of what's going on. I think it goes back to leaky gut. Mm. I think you have you have unfortunately sick people, whatever reason, needing some sort of bowel surgery. Because that's usually where it starts, right? They're having some, they need some sort of, whether it's cancer removal, maybe they, they burst an ulcer that's bleeding, whatever that is, right? They have to go in and they have to have significant bowel surgery. So here you're, you're doing surgery on the bowels on somebody who already has this thing right. called auto intoxication. They're already low on their immune system. And now you're doing surgery, which has been proven. Surgery in general lowers your immune system, raises inflammation, raises the cortisol, that drops your immune system. So you already have this patient today, any average American coming in who's already in auto intoxication, you're doing significant bowel surgery on them. And then you just put them in a room and you don't do anything to heal, heal their gut. Nothing. They don't do anything. Yeah. And I think that's why the C. difficile infections are on a rise because we are already predisposed to it. We don't take care of the patient's gut when they're in the hospital and you're seeing the rise in those cases. That's a, that's a frightening scenario. And, um, you know, on Facebook, you sit there and because I'm always searching for, uh, you know, different things going on in the body. And so they've got my number what is that called? Algorithms. Yeah. So I'm always getting these <laughs> video, these videos that you press on it. And now you're stuck for a half hour. <laughs> I just want to know what the answer is and what's the product. I just want to know. Yeah. But I see a lot on C diff now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think unfortunately you're going to continue to see it. Um, and 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 I think I think I think we could actually make a lot of headway if it became a routine thing um, to to put somebody right away on probiotics. Yeah. And you can do that just because they're on harsh antibiotics. Maybe they're on antibiotics as the surgery, yeah. whatever. You can still do probiotics. That's a myth that if you're on antibiotics, you can't take probiotics. That is not true. That's actually, you should probably double your dose. It's crazy because anti takes away, pro puts back. It's yeah. I, 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 when, if I have to put somebody on antibiotics, I rev up their probiotic Absolutely. intake. Yeah. So, so if, if you had somebody who had an antibiotics, 
would you take probiotics once a day, twice a day? Um, I mean, I, I think I would probably, um, I would take a probiotic 30 minutes before I took the antibiotic. So if you're on an antibiotic, some of them are twice a day. Uh -huh. I would do, I would do two doses of the probiotic. So he, every yeah. time you're down an antibiotic, you take a probiotic. I would do the probiotic a little earlier. Let, let, yeah. let it seed in there. It, it, it's been shown it takes for most people 30 to 40 minutes to get uh -huh. the um, probiotics from that, that capsule or if you do a drink, whatever it is to get actually into the beginning part of the colon, the, the end of the small intestine, the beginning of the colon, which is where you want most of those bacteria, 30, 40 minutes for most people. So why not take it, take your probiotic at that time, and then you take your antibiotic. Makes perfect sense. Now, E. coli, one, one way we get E. coli, and you can um, enlighten me on others, is uh, to protect yourself would be grass-fed beef. Uh, because our our cows were never designed to eat corn, they were designed to eat grass. But along the way, in trying to outthink nature, which I don't know why we think we're smarter than nature, we started feeding our cows corn uh, yeah. because they fattened up. You know, it's all sugar, and um, that goes against their natural uh, inclinations, right. and that's how they get E. coli. And then when they grind up all the meat and make hamburger, you know, you've got E. coli in your hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's that's grass fed beef, I think is a real mm -hmm. crucial. Absolutely. I and, don't eat anything other than grass fed beef. No, know? that's my, pick. but you know, everything you just said is true. It comes, um, I think most of that research came out of Texas A&M university mm -hmm. where they were looking at mm -hmm. the microbiome change over time as they took a cow from grass fed to grain and they did it in these stages so they took a cow that was grass fed from you know birth to that current day right maybe two right. years and then they did 80 percent grass fed 20 percent grain and they they literally went into the gut and they would pull out and they would look at the microbiome and then they went to 50 50 and then they went to 20 percent. you get the point and then eventually they got totally on grain and you could see that progression and change in the microbiome in, in that cow that led the cow to be more susceptible to some of the harmful E. coli that now were seeding their gut that you never saw in the grass-fed cow. And you know, I have a friend who um, has a ranch in, uh, outside of Southern California, raises cattle. And um, we we're driving in that area and I said, it was so great to see all those cows eating grass she says yeah we we start them out on grass but then <laughs> when they're ready for slaughter we put them on a full corn diet to fatten them up, fatten up. Yeah. yeah so that's 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 all that's scary to me because i how, how often am i eating pure grass fed beef because suzanne you know i like my beef me too you too. Me too. i'm not I eat, and I, I do try to no, look all, all those amino acids that are in meat and the meat has been so vilified, but yeah, uh, yeah. it's the greatest source of amino acids and the body doesn't work without them. And I just like the way beef tastes. How many, how often are we buying grass fed? Unless you're buying it from, if you know the, the farmer, right? Yep. If you know the person taking care of the life, I, how do I know if, these cows aren't getting all that corn at the end. Um, you actually have to call and figure out whatever brand you're buying, but at least try just gra grass fed. Yeah. Guys, just wanted, I just wanted to pop in. Um, we have so many great comments of people and I was trying to give you guys a little space just so you could have that great introductory conversation. We do have a special today at SuzanneSummers.com. A lot of you are asking where you can find some of these um, supplements that Suzanne and Dr. Mike have been talking about. Our sale today at SuzanneSummers.com, we have a free prebiotic gut renew and it's with any $50 purchase that automatically will, um, you can put that in your cart for free and it's a $39.99 value. So I'm gonna pop back out and put some questions up for you guys. But um, if you go to SuzanneSummers.com, you can take advantage of that deal all day today. Okay, and we we've got uh, we planned this show for you so that your 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 explanations today are just brilliant, Mike. Really, I think everybody's getting so much out of it, and I'm getting so much out of it. And we've got some uh, 
some supplements that will be apropos to what you've talked about. The last thing, I just want to get to H. pylori, because that's another thing. We did the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. That's called SIBO. That's when you get all this bloating up here in your upper small intestines. But so many people have H. pylori, which is helio, what is it, helio what? Helio pylori. Correct. <laughs> You win the prize. <laughs> H. pylori is fine. H. pylori. So um, what are symptoms of H. pylori? Well, that's, that's, we, we've linked that many, many years ago to your basic heartburn and your, your reflux diseases. So if you're dealing with that acid coming up, yeah. you down flat at night, um, you're popping antacids. Right. Um, that, that has been linked to H pylori infection because that's truly, truly what it is. And so that's why if you go to your doctor, your conventional doctor, and they diagnose that you have H pylori and, and reflux, they're going to put you on big time antibiotics to kill off the H pylori. And then they're going to put you on something that I think is one of the worst drugs ever made by man. And that is called a proton pump inhibitor. Oh, to I, knock out your acid production. So if you are, so H. pylori is something that's very prevalent. Luckily for most people, it doesn't cause a problem. But if you're one of those people where it does cause, cause reflux, I would first check, take a look at some of the natural solutions. There are natural things that can wipe out the H. pylori and help control reflux without having to take, I, I don't know if your audience is familiar with the proton pump inhibitors. These are drugs that basically, um, That'd be Nexium, Prevacid. Yeah, they knock out your acid production. Um, and I think, think of that, what you just said. Without right. stomach acid, you can't digest your food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're eating all this great food. You could eventually become malnourished from they a lack do. of stomach yeah. acid. We, yeah. now, we are now, we've now linked proton pump inhibitors to bone abnormalities wow. because you're not getting enough D and magnesium. Wow. Because you wow. can't, you're not digesting food properly. All those important minerals and vitamins just flush out your system and people get weird jaw stuff with proton pump in here. So not, not um, safe drug. As a matter of fact, most people that are given a, a PPI, proton pump in here prescription, are over the age of 65. And guess what? Even before they go on that drug, they're already malnourished. Yeah. And we're just adding to that yeah. malnourishment. Right. And of course, there's a whole host of problems. So let's tell them what they can do. One of the things that I'm really proud of with our company, Restore Life, is our advanced probiotic intestinal renew. And what's what's really interesting about this, and you know a lot about this supplement because um, you've had your hand in it in the production, uh, is dual encapsulation. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. This is so cool. Yeah. Uh, that, that's that's some innovative technology that we're using for this product. I mean, think of it this way, right? Those are live bacteria, right? So you want to do anything you can to help them survive that that journey from your mouth to the colon where you want them to get that upper colon. So what we do is we, it's a simple concept, but it's awesome. You put the live bacteria in an inner capsule, then you wrap it in another capsule. So that outer capsule takes all the hit, like, you know, coming down the gut. So right. The way that outer, but, but by the time you get to the upper large intestine, that outer capsule is gone. The, the, the inner capsule disintegrates and all those live bacteria are still there and they're seeding that colon where they need to be. It's a great it gets, way it. And it gets into your um, small intestine. So, so it's not all eaten up by the acid in your right. stomach. Yeah. Other, uh, other companies have used um, other ways to keep the bacteria alive. One of the th things that are popular called alginates. Um, these are compounds that have been used like for, um, heartburn and stuff like that. Uh, but we found that those just didn't work that well. Um, the dual encapsulation really ensures that about 90 to 95% of those live bacteria are getting to your colon. This is fantastic. And we we're talking uh, just now about uh, prebiotic. We yeah. have prebiotic gut renew. So this is what we're talking about. This is your yeah. food for these guys to make these guys work better. Yeah, and, and, the pre, and the prebiotics we use, Suzanne, remember, we're using these fibers that do not cause the bloating and stuff like that, that some other big, see prebiotics, remember we talked about this, these are fibers, right? We talked about the sauerkraut. Right. Well, they, t they can be real large and, and they can be tough on some people to take. So we're using ones that have been shown to be solid prebiotics, 
but they're smaller. They get in. They don't cause problems. And so, oh, and yeah, it's actually um, it tastes good. It's candy. Yeah, it tastes good. I kind of crave it. Yeah, mm. and uh, it's so yeah. So that's so you have and and we decided because of the prebiotics we use, they don't cause those gut problems. It was better to keep them separated from the probiotics. So we, the, what we use, and we think it is the best way to do this, probiotic and then a separate prebiotic. Um, and, and the ones we use won't cause those gut problems. You can't, you, we couldn't combine them together. We tried, it was better to keep them separate. And it's so much fun to eat the uh, prebiotics. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like having free candy. Um, <laughs> Barry just asked if um, this needs to be kept in the refrigerator, the um, dual encapsulated probiotic. No. You could keep it. I have mine. Uh, mine's right in my drawer in my desk. Isn't that nice. When yeah. I first started taking probiotic years ago, I'd have to, if I traveled, have to take a little ice pack to keep them cold. So that's, they must. Nope. You can try these dry. cool dry. It's this, it's, you store it like you do any other basic supplement. Very simple. Vinny, Vinny, who um, is one of our favorites here. <laughs> uh, he wants to know, can you have too many good probiotics in the gut? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I mean, I, it's always about balance, right? Um, but the, I mean, to answer that in general, no, <laughs> you want a lot of the good guys. You really do. Um, and, and keep in mind too, uh, even if you're eating well and you're managing stress, we still live in that toxic environment that, that does um, really promote the bad guy's growth. And so, um, you know, because I know I get this question a lot. Well, how about if I just do probiotics every other day or maybe every three days? And I'm like, no, based on how we live, based on the environment, I would take it every day. You're not going to get too much. You need to take that every day to keep that balance towards the good guy, but it is balanced. So in, in general, you know, Suzanne, it's funny when people ask me, oh, can I do too much of this or whatever? I always give kind of the same answer. You could do too much of anything. Yeah, right. You could drink too much water. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's always about balance. You could eat this whole bottle of candy here. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. I would, I, have gas. I would take <laughs> the probiotic every day because I know that what we do encourages the growth of the bad guys. And nature didn't say... I'm only going to give this to you on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. <laughs> People eat those ferment in South Korea. They, they're eating that kimchi every day. Every day. Every day. day. I, have to say, dinner. <laughs> I have to say, there's a lot of bad breath in, um, <laughs> over there. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, yes. so here is uh, Dot wants to know, best time to take uh, morning before food, after food? Uh, so um, if he's talking about the probiotic, um, ours, it doesn't matter. Um, there might be some other brands where they suggest you take it with some food, but ours doesn't matter. Um, the, prebiotic, the prebiotic is better without food. So I like, so I'll do the prebiotic and the probiotic first thing when I get up in the morning. And there's a couple other things I do that I think are better on empty stomach. So I have like four or five things I do. I get up, I take those before I even have my coffee. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about what you just said about take the uh, prebiotic about 40 minutes before you take the probiotic. I've been taking them together. So I learned something. Well, and, and, well I, that's the best way to do it. But I have also learned too, Suzanne, sometimes we, we can put too many rules and regulations down for people. At the end of the day, take them, right? Let's, them. let's like, I don't, I don't want to, but if you, if you are good at that and you can keep track, 30 minutes or so before prebiotic, before the probiotic. Okay, now digestive enzymes. We've got these great digestive enzymes. Um, we have on here take one capsule, although myself, I take uh, two or three because that's I've fine. had radiation. Every, everybody's a little different, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's so that, you know, that's that a great product if you are having some blo bloating issues. Um, I, first would, I first would start with the probiotics. I would, I think that's, that's your foundation gut um, supplement, the, the probiotics and prebiotics. But if you are still dealing with some bloating at that point, then I would add the digestive enzymes. And I could tell you this right now, Suzanne, we're able to totally wipe out gas bloating for a vast majority of people, 70, 80% with that regimen, probiotic, prebiotic, yeah. digestive enzymes. Did you all hear what he just said? That's pretty amazing. And um, it's just restoring what your body once made and doesn't yeah. make anymore because of a variety of factors, including stress. Yeah. Stress has a, a big negative effect on the gut. Absolutely. That, no, there's several good studies showing people with chronic stress 
um, have a higher um, risk of irritable bowel syndrome. And and that on and irritable bowel syndrome, by the way, is just is just a, a phrase for yeah. all kinds of gut problems. We don't really actually know you what stop. irritable bowel <laughs> is, but you know, there's a direct link between irritable bowel and 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 chronic stress. Um, yeah, so you got to stress has to be well. That's part of that. That's part of that lifestyle and how we live that I was talking about. Stress, bad food, not sleeping toxins, all of that support the bad bacteria in your gut. So not, so you do got to, we need to work on how we're eating and how we're sleeping and managing stress. And, and then add to that, the probiotics, the prebiotics and the digestive enzymes. It's a whole package. You know, when I had uh, breast cancer 20 years ago and I refused chemotherapy, I made a deal with myself and it's pretty much what you just said. I decided I was going to eat as though my life depended upon it, which I believe it does. I was going to change my thoughts and think positively and with gratitude. I was going to value sleep. And they were simple changes, but they've made such a, a difference yeah. in my life. And sure. last weekend, I went and messed it all up. Last weekend, uh, my new book comes out in January and I have a new editor at a new publishing house. so. With my old editor, it was just sort of a, yeah, all right, send it to me, it was that kind of thing. This got her edit back, and this is my first chance to look at my work, and I don't like anybody touching my stuff. <laughs> so I'm looking at my finished copy, and what has she done, and she's moved around, and she's done, and I had to go word by word um, and, wow. and, and look in the, in the in all the notes in the, in the counter, and I sat at my desk for three days, 14, 16 hours a day. Oh, Threw out yeah. my sciatic in my back. My <laughs> stomach floated up like crazy. And I know it was because I made myself sick to yeah. my stomach yeah. from that stress. Yeah. No, yeah. you you did. And that that's interesting. Sick to my stomach. It's true. I mean, we 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 do that. I mean, how often have you ever just been really scared for whatever reason and you feel like you're gonna throw up? Yep. That's yep. because the nervous system, the hormones are connected between the gut and the brain. That's I guess connection. that's what, yeah, they call, and speaking of, that's what I call it, gut intelligence. Okay, gut in the brain, here you go. Oh, there it is, yeah. Renew, dopamine, yeah, renew. that's great too. So that's, you know, that again, you you know, you're, you're supporting dopamine levels there, and that's going to have an effect not just on the brain, but also just in general about how the gut is moving. That's an important thing. Um, dopamine's a neurotransmitter, and one of the things it does, it doesn't, cause your body to move, but it causes your body to move in a coordinated way so that there's, there's a rhythm to how we move. The fact that I can reach over and grab my pen and hold it like this, that's dopamine. Dopamine allows me to be, to have that dexterity. So, and it does the same thing to your gut. It, there's two basic movements in your gut. There's what's called peristalsis, which is what moves the food and the waste, right? And then there's another one called a migratory motor matrix, MMM. This is, this is usually happens at night and it helps to clean out the small intestine. Wow. As a matter of fact, we've, we've linked a bad motor, migratory motor uh, matrix to SIBO, small intestinal bowel uh, bacteria overgrowth. Wow. We actually think that by not cleaning out the small intestine at night, those, those, those bacteria from the colon can move up into the small so so that that kind of cleaning movement that's dopamine so you're that's so incredible with... yeah it's the most incredible explanation dopa renew you think one a day two a day i think it depends on you know what you're going through you really have some gut issues yeah you do you could do a couple and see how that works it well you know let me back that up I, maybe it's you know it's sometimes better to always start a little low and you can always, yep. it's always easier to increase yep, yep, than it yep. is to decrease. So maybe start with one, see how you do it. If you need another one, that's fine. The other thing I ask when I give a lecture after I ask how many in the room are bloated and every hand goes up. Uh, the next one is how many are constipated? Everybody's constipated. It's, it's, it's just an incredible thing. It's, yeah. Yeah. The, and I think it's because of all the things you and I've just been talking about the yeah. The transit time is is uh, slowed down by, and then I I also think aging. I think it, this is just something I've been thinking about lately. With aging, 
uh, your intestines get kind of worn out too. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. We we, we also have a link uh, between menopause and constipation. It's it's a very common complaint. Women postmenopausal um, headaches and constipation are like the top two complaints that they that we see. All those hands go up. Yeah. So yeah. as a result, um, we had you and your team create the gentle colon renew. Yeah. I love this. I'll tell it's you why I love this. I I drink it like a hot tea at night before I go to bed. You can have it in cold water. I put a big heaping spoon in a teacup with um, hot water and it bubbles up and it's kind of this fizzy the drink. Bubbly, it, the bubbles nice, right? <laughs> the bubbles are nice. And then in the morning, it's a gentle uh, release. Yeah. Uh, it's not violent. Sometimes it's not a, it's not a, a laxative. It's just, it's not that's, I want, that's important, right? Suzanne, um, yeah. a laxative. Yeah, not explosive. That's like yeah, it's not, it actually, it were, it's, it has magnesium. It has effervescent vitamin C and what it's doing is it's just working naturally with that, with that nat that remember that mate, that, that, what did I call It's the MMM. It's yeah. the, um, that I just went blank on the name. It just, it's the, uh, it's that movement that clears out that small right. intestine. That's what that's working with. The, the migratory muscle matrix. matrix. I know I was going to remember it. Right. There you go. For a moment, you're having a menopausal moment. <laughs> yeah. I'm having more, I'm matrix. having more of those. So. <laughs> All right. I don't know if this is glary on here, but, um, just uh, yeah, they can renew a spoon at night and a cup of hot water, or you can, if you don't have a hot pot or something, you can put it in cold water, but yeah. having a nice cup of tea before you go to bed is a nice experience. And then it's, it's um, another nice experience when you wake up in the morning and it's not violent. Yeah. Um, it's not Mount Vesuvius. Yeah. It's not crazy. It's, it, it's working with your gut. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. just going to pop in and remind you guys that we have a special going today at SuzanneSummers.com. Um, all of the Restore Life products are available for you that Dr. Mike and Suzanne have been talking about. And any $50 purchase on the site that's in supplements or anywhere on the site, you're going to get a free prebiotic gut renew, which is a $39.99 value. So really nice, almost $40 free gift today. And you can hop on SuzanneSummers.com. There's no promo code or anything. Just go on and um, when you put it in your cart, it will be taken off at checkout. It's nice. Well, let's kind of go through what we've gone through. And also, I highly recommend to all of you who've been watching this, this will be up, you know, I would re-watch this. Dr. Mike has given you such valuable information. This is like getting a free lecture. And he's he's of, of the best of the best. He knows his stuff, as you can tell from what he's been talking about. But we talked about the absolute importance of probiotics yep. and taking prebiotics beforehand with it to make this is the food for the probiotic this makes your probiotic work better yeah. and, and remember it, the prebiotic gives the advantage to the good guys advantage like yeah. you can win the war with yes. these guys okay and then the digestive enzymes the digestive renew you heard yep. what dr mike said about this this is yep. um after a meal i take mine after a meal do you dr mike yeah, well, um, yes, but you can, some people find it's better they take it right before they eat. Okay. You kind of have to, it's individual, just figure figure it out, you know, try it and see see what works best. Here's a girl right here, Hillier. Your supplements have been a blessing, helping me heal from SIBO, get my gut balanced and the nutrients back that the bad bacteria stole. So she yeah. understands the whole story. Yeah, it's like, I, it's like you got little animals in there and they're, yeah. they're fighting and you gotta, you gotta let the good animals win. There you go. Okay. Dopa renew. That's the best explanation of, of a dopa dopamine and the gut brain connection. Right. Anything else you want to say? Help. This? It's going to help the gut move and the gut has to move. Gut has to move. Yes. And I think so much of SIBO up here, small intestinal bacteria yes. overgrowth is because it's not moving. Yeah, if you're not going in the right direction, mouth to the out, the anus, yeah. right? It's yeah. gonna go the other way. And that's wow. where you get the reflux. That's where you wow. get the, the bacteria coming up into the intestine. So wow. dopamine coordinates that movement. Isn't that an incredible thing? I knew this was amazing. It does more than I even realized. And I think I see, I see so many women walking around with bloated 
upper intestines. Yeah. Everybody thinks the stomach is, you know, where where your uh, intestines are. Your stomach's over right under your uh, way up. Right. It's way up there. Way up here. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> it, it's it's getting the food from the stomach into the small intestine, and if things aren't working right, you're in trouble. And then finally, um, the gentle colon renew. That's great. The gentle cleanse in the in the best way. It's enjoyable to drink. It tastes you good. Take it every day. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Safe. Yeah. 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 So invest in a hot pot in your bedroom so you don't have to walk all the way to the kitchen. Um, we were almost out of time here, Mike, but um, this uh, you're, you're this was just an incredible oh, thank you. hour and you were, your explanation. I love doing it. I, I, it's fun. Well, you know, when you have the kind of information that you have to share it and share it in such a way that lay people can understand. And that's, that's a rarity for a doctor. Doctors usually speak at another level. And I love that you've broken it down to the area where we all go, Oh, I get it. I really understand it. Yeah. So I want to encourage all of you, all of you to watch this again because some of this will have gone by and if any of these uh, issues uh, resonate with you then here they are and, and Caroline told you about the great deal today we just want you to try them we just want you to feel better and and we talked about grass-fed beef organic chicken organic food it makes a difference it really makes a difference I don't know when they thought it was a good idea to put poison on our food. Yeah. And it's frankly not a good idea. And we're all paying the price. And that's why you're all walking around holding your stomachs. What I do love about organic food, I'm sure you've noticed, Mike, is that uh, it once was much more expensive. It's not much more expensive. It's better. No, it is. You're right. Yep. It's kind it of improved. Yep. Yeah. Has improved. There's more access. There are a lot more stores. It's like movements are interesting. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even mean to do that, did you? <laughs> right. But but the he was <clears throat> it was the bioidentical hormone movement. It caught on and caught on, caught on, and now it's just, it's like an ocean liner that has been turned around. Yeah. With the gut, we're starting to turn this ocean liner. Around. Do it. Yep. We can win the war on our gut, but you've got to make some changes in your life. You've got to take these supplements that will not be a band-aid like a drug, but actually help to rectify. Heal. The actually heal, heal and get you heal. back to normal function. Right. Yeah. Right. And so um, you're getting a lot of kudos and people saying great job, Dr. Mike. And oh, uh, thank you guys. All, it's my pleasure. Okay. Do you have any final words? Yeah. Um, Remember, probiotic, prebiotic, digestive enzymes, that that right there, those three can solve a vast majority of gut problems for most people. Yep. And then for me, what the way you explained Dopa Renew today, that, uh, wow, to keep it from going up, you got to get it to go down. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. the gut brain, we want to protect our brains in today's world with this onslaught of chemicals. Um I, I have several friends now who are losing their minds and it's just the saddest, that saddest thing. It is. And remember it's connected to the gut. And and so I, I, I've always said this in many lectures and I will continue to say it. You're only as healthy as your gut. You are only as healthy yeah. as your gut. If you can't digest food, absorb nutrients and eliminate waste in a way that's comfortable and feels good, you're not going to be healthy and it's going to yeah. affect every other part of your body, not just the brain. Right. Yeah. You know, if your gut's not healthy, inflammation, oxidative yeah. stress, joint all pain. those things go up, yeah. you know? Right. Well, joint pain, autoimmune, lupus, fibromyalgia, MS, all these things, those all originate in the gut. Auto even intoxication. Macular, even macular degeneration. So we're going to say goodbye. I thank you. Thank you so much. Mark, thank you, guys. Mike, really, really. My pleasure. Great and important show and... Um, you're always good, but this is the best you've ever been. Oh, wow. And we will be we will, this will be posted on that's, Suzanne. That's big, Suzanne. Are you sure about that? That's I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. agree. Um, this yeah. will be posted on Suzanne's Facebook page, so you can go back and watch this for reference. And we hope you can jump onto the website today and take advantage of this great deal. Thanks, you guys. All right, awesome. okay, bye, bye, guys. Bye, 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 everybody. Bye, bye, bye. bye everybody. Bye.